This video is about rational functions and what to do if there are holes in the graph. Again, that may not make sense to you right now, but let me go ahead and give you an example here. So, like, let's say I had f of x equals x squared minus 4 over x squared minus x minus 2. All right, and if I asked you to graph this rational function or do a rough sketch, uh, the things we would need to know would be x-intercept, y-intercept, any vertical asymptotes that might exist, and any horizontal asymptotes that might exist. Okay? So, if we go through each one, the so x-intercepts plug in 0 for x, or excuse me, for x-intercepts plug in 0 for y, and really I would just solve for the top, so it's x squared minus 4, which, again, you might get if you solve, you might get plus or minus 2, right? Because if you were to solve the top, x squared minus 4 equals 0. Add 4. x squared equals 4. Square root. If I had the square root myself, you might say x equals 2. Ah, but it's actually positive and negative 2. Okay. y intercept plug in 0 for all the x's, which I'd be left with negative 4 over negative 2, which would just equal positive 2. Okay. Um... Vertical asymptotes, so that will exist where the denominator equals 0. So I'm going to set the denominator equal to 0 this time. So x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. It's quadratic, so we usually like to do the x-factor chart, if you will. Negative 2 on top, negative 1 on the bottom, I believe. Negative 2, positive 1 would be the right comma, right? And a is 1, perfect. So it would be x minus 2, x plus 1. And so I'm left with x equals 2, x equals negative 1 is my vertical asymptotes. And some of you may say, oh, there's a problem, there's a problem. I'm going to get there, don't you worry. Okay, horizontal asymptotes, we look to the highest power, squared and squared, meaning they're equal to each other, meaning I just take the coefficients in front, which is 1 and 1, so 1 over 1 equals 1, so horizontal asymptote of 1. So... You might be saying, okay, well, if I were to make a graph of this, so if I have an x-intercept at positive 2, wait, I also have a vertical asymptote at 2. Right, I can't have an x-intercept where there's a vertical asymptote. That doesn't make sense. So what do we do in this case? Well, this is what we call in a rational functions, this is what we call a hole. So... It's sort of a random place on the graph where the rest of the graph can exist except for not just the whole asymptote, but it's that one spot where it can't exist. Okay? So, and the way that we find that is, so first, if you go through all the work and say, hey, there's an x-intercept where there's a vertical asymptote, we actually need to go back and factor the original problem. Okay? So we're going to go back and factor the original problem here, which I'm going to scoot over here. Okay? So... Again, so x squared minus 4 over x squared minus 2x, or excuse me, x squared minus x minus 2x. Okay. Now, the cool part, excuse me, that's just minus 2. So the cool part is, do we already factor the bottom? Yes, we did. So we already know that the bottom is going to be x plus 2, or excuse me, x minus 2, x plus 1. The top, hopefully you can look at that and say, oh, that's the difference of two squares. Wouldn't that become x plus 2, x minus 2? All right, watch what happens. Notice, do I have x minus 2 on both the top and the bottom of my fraction? That just means we can cancel it out. So really, see how if I were to solve that, like x would equal 2 in this case, right? x equals 2, x equals 2. So I'm able to actually get rid of that piece of the function, eliminating my issue. Right, because I my x-intercept, if I get rid of it, is just at negative two. If I get rid of that vertical asymptote, again, there's only one vertical asymptote at negative one. So now I no longer have an issue. Okay, and that happens when whenever you so the, the way I like to think about it is if an x-intercept is the same as a vertical asymptote, there is a hole, and that's what the hole is. But this is mathematically how you find it. Now, here's the cool part: none of the other data changes. Think about it. So my x-intercept is still at negative 2. That's true. Y-intercept is still at 2. That's true. Uh, we just change vert vertical asymptotes. And then a horizontal asymptote, again, the powers are the same. Take the coefficients. It's still 1 over 1, which is 1. So everything stays the same. So my working theory is, 
if you see a repeat of x-intercept and vertical asymptote, just get rid of it. And remember, that's where a hole exists. So a hole at 2. So now if I were to make a graph, so x-intercept at negative 2, okay, that's negative 2. Uh, y-intercept at 2, okay. Uh, vertical asymptote at negative 1. And horizontal asymptote at 1. Okay, and we use the number line trick here to determine what part goes where. So again, the only true uh, x values here are my x-intercept of negative 2 and my vertical asymptote at negative 1. Okay, the function starts off positive. I got negative 1. It's a power of 1 over here, so that's going to be switched to the negative. And then negative 2 I got from the top, it's an exponent of 1, so it switches the positive. So, it's all positive up until negative 1, which makes sense in this case. Right? It's all going to be above here. And then, when it gets to negative 1, it's negative. But when it gets to negative 2, it stays positive. But remember, it's going to hug that asymptote there all the way until infinity. So that's what that graph looks like. So that's how you deal with a hole. Oh wait, that's the, oh duh, Mr. Schwan, come on. So two is where my hole is. When you graph a hole, see so notice it's just this one place, so I just put a big old hole, like open dot right there. So my graph can still exist, just at x equals two, there's just a hole in my graph, and that's what that looks like. All right, so that's how you deal with holes. I'll do another quicker example here in just a minute.